Uh, I want to uh, finish what I was unable to finish in class on Thursday uh, when, we, when I discussed section 5.1, uh, which was how to linearize uh, a nonlinear system so we can understand the behavior at its equilibrium points. The, uh, the punchline of the whole story was the development of what's called the Jacobian. And so this short talk is just called Using the Jacobian to Linearize Nonlinear Systems. And when I say linearize them, I simply mean that we are um, representing them uh, as a linear system in a very localized region, specifically near where their uh, equilibrium values are. So, uh, in summary, I showed at the end, and I derived at the end, that if we have a nonlinear system with the right-hand side f of xy um, and g of xy, the Jacobian matrix uh, is easy to calculate. It's the partial of f with respect to x, partial of f with respect to y, partial of g with respect to x, and the partial of g with respect to y. If x naught y naught is an equilibrium point of system star, then the linearized system corresponding to that specific uh, equilibrium point is given uh, in matrix form because it's linear. dy dt uh, is equal to the Jacobian uh, times y, where uh, of course y. <clears throat> I'm going to put it in. Well, that's fine. Where y is just the vector uh, x of t, y of t. And so our uh, Jacobian is just uh, this matrix evaluated at the equilibrium point. So f, f sub x at the equilibrium point, f sub y at the equilibrium point, and so on. So let me show you uh, the three examples that I started with uh, yesterday and show you how we use this Jacobian to do the linearization in one uniform, consistent way. So example one that I showed in class worked with the Van der Poel equation. Here it is in nonlinear, it's in its nonlinear form. It's f of x and y of, and g of x are given, f of x, y, g of x, y are given like this. Here I've rewritten them in a form that'll make it easier to compute their partial derivatives. Partial derivative of f with respect to x is a 0, with respect to y is a 1. Partial derivative of g with respect to x uh, is a negative 1. You get a 0 here, and minus 2xy. And with respect to y, we get a 1 and a negative x squared. So here's the, the general Jacobian that I can use for any equilibrium point. Uh, there is, is only one equilibrium point in this case at the origin. And I simply take 0, 0, plug it in. And by the way, this means where um, the Jacobian uh, j that I'm using is this vertical line means it's being evaluated at 0, 0. And when you evaluate it at 0, 0, you get a 0 in the first position, a 1 in the second position. When you plug in 0, 0 here, you get just a minus 1. And when you plug in 0, 0 here, you get a 1. So here's our linear system. We look at its corresponding eigenvalues. They are complex. I left off the i. They are complex. One second, I'm going to put that in black. Uh, they are complex, so there should be an i here. And that means complex with a uh, positive real part means it's a, a spiral source. Uh, so we know at 0, 0, we have a spiral source. The next example I showed uh, was a predator-prey model where there were four equilibrium points. And it would be interesting to, to apply this method to all of them, but I specifically showed what happens at the equilibrium point 1, 1. So what's the nature of the equilibrium point at 1, 1? And I showed you in the graph that we already could tell it would be a saddle point, but how do we do this mathematically and convince ourselves without having to use the technology. So to linearize at 1, 1, uh, we're going to use the Jacobian. Here's our f of xy, our g of xy. 
when I take the partial derivative with respect to x and the partial derivative with respect to y of f and the partial derivative with respect to x of, of this g function and its partial with respect to y. These are my four terms. When I evaluate the Jacobian at 1, 1, I get uh, minus 1, minus 1, minus 2, minus 1. This is the same uh, thing that I derived in class, but notice it's very consistent. In class, I, I had to uh, change variables and, um, and recompute the, the whole system. All that's been done for us in the process of computing the Jacobian. So um, I can compute it at 1, 1. My linearized system is this. I find its eigenvalues, and sure enough, one of them is positive and one of them is negative, I have a saddle point. Finally, last example. Same example I showed in class, in, uh, in this case where it's nonlinear, but in this case it's, it's not a polynomial, we have a trigonometric function that's making it nonlinear. Zero, zero is an equilibrium point. Uh, looking at the partial derivatives, f sub x and f sub y and g sub x and g sub y, I use those to build the Jacobian. Since I'm interested in linearizing the system at 0, 0, I evaluate the Jacobian at 0, 0. The only term that has a variable in it is this one. And cosine at 0 is a 1. So here is our matrix. Easy to compute our eigenvalues. Again, it's complex, but with a negative real part. And so we know we have a spiral sink. So that's the part I didn't get to at the end of class when I was rushing. I hope this helps clarify uh, what I was, how this technique works. It's very straightforward to apply. Not so easy to follow the derivation, but certainly the application of it is straightforward. So I hope this helps. Send me an email if you have problems. Thank you. Good luck. Bye-bye.